Kamado is the expressive act of either stretching or compressing time. For me, this is the most difficult thing to teach someone because it's really personal. You and I could agree, hey, this moment coming up is special. It's the end of a phrase. There's an intense dissonant harmony. I want to draw attention to it. I want to take some time right around here. And we don't even need reasons to do it. It could just be an instinct. But the way you and I take time will be different because we're reacting to that beautiful, vulnerable moment in different ways. Even if you have a natural instinct about where to take and give extra time, there's some basic musical clues that have really helped me understand why certain places deserve more expressive time than others. Before we get to that, you should really know what you're getting into with rubato. It's one of the more triggering subjects for some people. If you take too much time, you can sound indulgent. And if you take too little time, you can sound completely heartless. It's a subtle art and it takes years to hone your own taste and sensibility with it. But ultimately, it's your own conviction in what you're doing and why you're doing it that gives power to your expressive choices. To me, there are a few different kinds of rubato, different situations that could warrant some expressive time taking. Let's talk about one of those, structural time. Structure or form in music is basically how notes add up to gestures, which add up to phrases, which add up to the bigger sections, which can relate to each other in a big picture way. Kind of like how words add up to sentences, that add up to paragraphs, that add up to chapters that tell a story. For example, let's emphasize the phrasing in Brahms. I use rubato between the phrases to indicate the cadence or end of the phrase and the start of the new one, which begins the same way before going off into this sequence. A much more final cadence ends this second phrase and completes the section. These are the bigger checkpoints on the page I just played, showing where I take time for structural reasons. In classical music in general, phrases are often four or eight bars long and can be cut in half unless the composer is being intentionally sneaky. You should always just try to use your ears first, but if you can't figure out where the phrase ends, try segmenting four bars at a time. Now, it's not like I played everything else straight. How I want to sing melodies and counter melodies within the phrases how I feel every harmonic change, and how I swell or contract with dynamics all affect my timing more subtly. Let's go back to Chopin for a cantabile style that needs rubato for melodic reasons. First, let me play this Chopin Nocturne with no rubato at all, and maybe you can feel what's missing. It's actually hard for me to play it this way technically and musically without the flexible style of the right hand singing freely, inspired by bel canto arias from operas in Chopin's time. Let's add in some rubato. I think a lot of students are surprised about just how freely they could play in this music so long as it's done with conviction and isn't overused. Too much push and pull can get boring and predictable and fragment the long phrases, but if you save it for where it really counts, it can create a sense of beautiful longing that's essential to romantic expression. Sometimes the texture of the music suggests more freedom and flexibility. 
in this next case, a lack of accompaniment. We started high up in the clouds, and we've been very gradually falling down to earth. The way Debussy delays a strong cadence or a real bass note for the whole opening gives that suspended feeling that allows for more flexibility in rubato. It's sparse, and there's no accompaniment to rhythmically tie the melody down. The truth is, harmony, melody, structure, mood, all of these work together to form your feelings as a performer in any given moment and help you know whether using rubato feels right. And although there's taste and subtlety at play, I found that when you're experimenting with time, it's better to go too far and to get way outside of your comfort zone. Record yourself. I think you'll find that more often than not, we forget that the rigid black and white lines and dots on the page are a shallow blueprint for a work of art that needs all the flexibility and vulnerability that only a human being can bring. 